What's up, world? Welcome back to the first Hoopers Roundtable. This is a project we decided to do with a close friend, Alan, where we took um, a bunch of BBL players and asked them about their time in the league and prior to the league. Um, Alan, can, can you go into more detail about it, please? Hey, guys. Yeah, so the idea was pretty simple. Um, roughly about two, three years ago, we had the idea where the London Lions and um, the London Royals were in a tennis competition for the Battle of London. And we thought, you know, it would be really cool if we had this opportunity to have all of these guys sat down in the round table and just kind of share the experience of what it's like. Um, obviously, we didn't get a chance to do it back then, for whatever reasons. And given the current circumstances, Mo came up with the idea of like, yo, let's expand this. Let, let, let's get across the, the league and across the, 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 the other players too. And so it was a great idea. And I think it went pretty well. So. Who did, you, who did you guys mirror your game around when you were growing up? For me, I, I love Tim Duncan. And my game is nothing like Tim Duncan. So, um, <laughs> no, but like I, when I first started bas basketball, there was a, it was the Edinburgh Rocks. And there was a guy called Ted Berry who was five foot eight. So I didn't really have anyone to emulate my game on. But I just, I don't know, I just started picking up a little bit here, a little bit there. But uh, Tim Duncan was the player that I, I just loved. I loved the fact that, you know, from a fundamental standpoint, he'd be just solid, you know, and that's, I guess that was who. And then Lamar Odom was the next one because he was a lefty. So um, hey. that was probably the two players that I really kind of, like, strive to be when I was younger. I look like Tim Duncan too. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I don't know if I really mirrored my game off to anybody. Um, obviously, the British guys are... Um, that were all the London based guys know. Like I played pro um majority on the perimeter growing up. Um used to handle the ball a lot more and stuff like that. It was only until I got to the States and I got to college and stuff that I started playing in the post. But like I idolized I guess from that standpoint, um like a, a T Mac and stuff like that growing up and then as I got older and moved kind of like my position more to the post work. It was more like a I guess a KG in the in the in the block and on in the mid block. And um yeah, I guess it kinda of just changed as I got older because obviously I grew and got a lot taller and my game kinda of had to adapt to my height instead of um, being a guard, uh, predominantly like in my team young teams and, and um, growing into my late teens until um, I turned into like a four or five. Obviously, like, around that time, probably like Alan Iverson, obviously, you know what I'm saying? There's no one that can play like Alan Iverson, but I think growing up, especially as a guard, um, Alan Iverson was that guy. But um, I think for me also, you know, especially the guys in London, you know, a lot of the Brixton guys, the older guys, I kind of looked up to Sean Gray, Lake and Papula, um, Marvin Addy, uh, Rashid Quadri, like those type of guys, kind of, you know, like you kind of see their game and try to take little aspects of their game and implement in your own game, you know. Um, so yeah, man, a bunch of people, really, a bunch of people. Um, I guess for me it's a little bit different because I picked up basketball really late. So um, I started playing when I was like sixteen, seventeen. So it wasn't a case of me. I was telling Mo, Mo, Mo early your, your, about your first basketball game. Oh man, don't stop. <laughs> stop. That's something I won't leave behind. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess I guess there isn't one person I really like I, at the age of 16, there's not really one person you just try and emulate. Like I was trying to pick up the game at a rapid pace. So I was picking little bits from different people. Um, I remember being being young and being uh, in the library on YouTube, uh, just studying like highlight reels of them kind of guys um, and just picking different aspects that I could do at the time because I wasn't as skilled as I am now at the time. So I had to pick different aspects and try and work on them. And then more locally, guys that were around, Guys like Waleed, guys like Julius Joseph, guys like Mark Martin, all of those guys, I've definitely stole a lot of stuff from. So, like I said, I picked up the game later. So, some of the guys that um, I picked stuff up from are still around and still uh, balling. So, yeah, that's that's mine. Uh, um, for me, Scotty Pippen was huge for me growing up. I enjoyed the fact that he played both under the floor. 
um, his passing ability and just kind of like his versatility. So, yeah, growing up, he was definitely someone I tried to be like. Um, I would say um, I'm the same as Teo. You know, I didn't pick up basketball to what, year, year seven? And then the person I, I looked up to was um, Shaq. But um, I don't play like him. Don't 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 worry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so if I had to pick someone, I'll pick Shaq. Well, I think mine's was I don't know if people know, but Kenny Anderson, Kenny Anderson, mm-hmm. Nick Van Exel, yeah. my two guys. And then later, Alan Iverson, like Justin said, but the two guys that I really really focused on was Kenny Anderson because he was super crafty, just a bucket competitive, all that, and Nick Van Exel as well. So those are my two that I really try to pet my Does anybody have a specific moment or time where they started to realize, yo, like, I'm getting nice, like, no one can <laughs> <laughs> And if so, where was it? Oh, man. So I, I go first. I haven't had that early yet. Yeah, you go first, yes. Um, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> um, that's a... Um, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of a, a tough question. I, I mean, I guess probably, for me, it's probably like 12, 13, um, uh, when Jimmy Rogers kind of like allowed us to play under 18s. And I remember like I was playing against White Heat. I was like yeah. 12, 13, playing against like guys like um, Craig Morris, yeah. all those guys. <laughs> and they were putting on like a, um, back in the day, White Heat used to have this like 2 2 1 crazy like full court press. And I was, best, I, best I, was like, I was, whatever man. Um, I was tiny, like you know, like, I, I was really short back then, probably like five, six. And I, and I remember just like being so small and crafty enough to like kind of break through the, the press. Um, and I was by far like the youngest player on the team, so that kind of gave me the confidence, like okay, like you know, I'm starting to improve. You know, my coaches trust me. You know, they respect me and. Obviously, when I went to like under 16s, then it, it, it just became easy, you know. Like I'm, I'm playing against my my peers, guys in the same age as me, and the game just kind of became easy, man. And you just start to, you know, to dominate your age group, you know. And then you move up into men's, and then yeah, man. So I'd say about 12, 13. I think mine is when I got that first college offer, that first, you know, that first team, that university that really was interested in me. I was like, okay, I probably can play this game. Because before that, we used to just play for fun. It was just, I knew nothing about getting offers. I knew nothing about overseas at all. I think it was when I got that first offer from Southern Illinois. And I was like, okay, I might be nice. I might be, <laughs> I might be nice. So that was probably my first moment. I haven't had that feeling yet. <laughs> nice. What? Not nice. I understand. No, um, I just think my first, my first ever moment of feeling like, oh, I'm actually, you know, like first pretty decent was probably highlight probably it. under 20. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so just getting a bit of recognition, really, because when I was playing in Nottingham, we never really left Nottingham that much. Didn't play in tournaments and stuff, so under twenty years was probably my first time where I got recognition from somewhere else. <laughs> I would, but I, I did have the chance to go to um, school in the states, so I will say is when when I was eighteen when I came to Newcastle, that's when I realized, yep, yeah, I'm nice like that. <laughs> <laughs> Matt was just born that way, yeah. <laughs> Matt, I, I know Matt was. <laughs> okay, wow, bro. I came out that way. What about you, Matt? When did you realize you were nice? Do it. Nah, He's trying to be humble uh, right now. <laughs> yeah, bro. Nah, we, um, as kids, myself and Justin, like, we grew up obviously playing together and stuff. We were young, um, but we, were, um, we didn't really have teams that uh, played for London Towers because they had young age groups. And um, it was like, my first proper real games, but like as soon as I started playing with them, I was only about 10 or 11 years old, but like I was getting called up for under 12 and under 13 for the England team. Um, so obviously before that, 
I was just really training, practicing, 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 but you don't actually see anybody else. You don't have competition against anybody else. But then like when I finally got to play against other kids around the country, my own age, and I was automatically like a first call up and, and, and going to England camps and stuff like that. At that age, I thought like my mind kind of shifted, I guess, um, of trying to like turn it into something and, and go to the States and get scholarships and stuff. I would say uh, for me, it was like a false sense of security because I was playing in Scotland. You know, it was, I was having like 42 points a game or something. <laughs> and I, or something like that. I can't remember exactly. But I went to, I went to five, <laughs> I went to five star basketball camp at 16. And uh, I think that was for me going over to the States, being in a camp uh, and having coaches saying, you know, if you work hard, you could get a scholarship and stuff. It kind of just kind of hit me. It, I was very similar in the sense that I just played for fun. It was a hobby. But then all of a sudden, I'm getting these these offers and looks. And it's just, I kind of get a little bit of recognition thinking that, you know what, I can actually do something with that. I think that kind of gave me a little bit of confidence to go forward. But my whole career, I never had that I'm nice kind of mindset. I was, you know, I, guess they, I guess they call it imposter. Don't like you, man. Yes, you was, but don't lie. <laughs> I guess they have that like imposter syndrome kind of thing. Like, you know, I was always trying to, prove to myself that I was good enough but I guess sometimes having those kind of people saying this I think that one definitely going to that camp kind of really helped me and kind of justified of you know why I played this game and I could actually go further with it. Um, similar to what Kieran said like I never had I don't I don't know when that moment occurs I never had that one moment where I was like okay yeah this is it like I'm going to super say a moment I never had it but like <laughs> I, I guess <laughs> I guess because I picked up the game late, I felt like I was always playing catch up. So I never really, really, really had that one moment, especially being a junior, where I was like, okay, yeah, this is it. I'm, I'm, I'm nice. But over the years of playing and getting certain accolades and just playing, you instill that confidence in yourself. And it's, 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 it's got to be self-given, I think. Um, and then once you, once you, once you feel that kind of way, there's no one defining moment I can say that, yeah, this is, this is it. But I guess over the years, I've just instilled that confidence in myself. 